Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel for episode 9 of Bumbling Through Birthright. And it's kind of a weird episode because we had a session where we just did like in character in a pub so there's not really anything to share about that. But at the end of the role playing in a pub we did have some petitioners so I will start with that and then I will just move into the following session. If you remember at the end of the last session we had had petitioners and we had Kane, the ambassador from the bandit kingdom who came and we talked to him we were like listen let us open up a trade route into your country we will help you feed your citizens but also give us a post there that Jan can set up a holding and you know then we'll be good. So while we're having petitioners, Kane comes back. He says the king is totally amenable to having this trade route, but no to the outpost. Give him an outpost in your capital instead, which is definitely not what we want to do because we're pretty sure that he's, you know, a bad person. And I mean, part of the reason that we wanted to get an outpost in their country was so that we could start sending in spies and kind of figure out what's going on. Because right now, the only person that we have in that country is Vardigan, who is our ambassador. So we tell them no, and I'm sure that this will come back to haunt us later. Next, Van Hender comes in, and he's the witch hunter, if you remember. He had just taken a trip up to Sayerscap because he had heard there was witchcraft there. I had missed this session, but apparently the party had gone up there and and there definitely was witchcraft involved and there was like a burnt corpse and all that fun stuff so yeah we're like I don't know what you're talking about but it's he's getting closer he's getting closer next Haldir who is one of our employees I guess comes in he's got two ravens one is from Bardigan who I just mentioned Roz had asked him to go from his position where our embassy is in the capital of the bandit kingdom down to Iver which is where the king actually stays all the time because it's nicer on the coast so he says he is on his way there and he's hired mercenaries which I think is a good thing because I don't know, I have a feeling that's like, oh, I'm sorry, your ambassador just suddenly died from unknown causes and ignore the knife wounds. So that's a thing, but you know, at least he has some mercenaries. And then there is the Jarl Nyral who is up in the woods in the north of the Bandit Kingdom and she has agreed to trade with us for lumber so we can fix our wall. And it's great because now we have more open forms of communication with her in the event that we need to attack the bandit king. Next, a chieftain and his wife show up and they are very upset because their daughter has died from the plague. So they want us to either resurrect her daughter or at least make it so necromancy isn't illegal anymore. And we're like, no, sorry, that is what it is. Again, probably going to be a problem. But Renolfer was actually taking the petitioners this time. He is a druid. And even so, he was like, listen, no, it's against the law. Even though in his personal beliefs and for his church, he might not so much be there. He's like, no, it's against the law. And also, as he said to us, if they want to do it, they're going to do it anyway. So it doesn't really matter what we do. And lastly, a delegation from Hoganmark shows up at the castle and they want to know if they can spend the night. And I mean, obviously, we have got hospitality from other places because of our status. So we're like, yeah, sure, you can stay. Well, it turns out they weren't actually a delegation from Hoganmark. They were jerks. And so they want to kill our queen. They want to kill Brenda. So we got into a huge fight in the middle of the castle. The wizard may have blown out the walls with a fire paw. I don't know. And we took them out. We killed them all, but they did have like some marking on them, linking them to Syl the White Witch, who is like an ever-growing enemy of ours. Um, so at least Brindis isn't dead, which is a good thing. Um, there's a hole in the castle, but you know, whatever, future problem. So I actually missed the first half of this next session because I had to work work late. Ugh. But the people that we had there were Brindis, Jan, Valkyrie, and then eventually Roz. And so they probably had like two to three hours of play before I showed up. And in that time, the spirit had come to Valkyrie and was like, you need to follow me, avenge my death, all this stuff, like really creepy in the castle. And so 
it said we needed to head north, so they started to head north. Specifically, I think the spirit said you need to go to Hoganmark, which is really interesting because that delegation just tried to kill us from Hoganmark, but they weren't actually from Hoganmark. But we head north. It's still winter, so it kind of sucks. But we're on our way, and as we're going, we like pass through the Blood Skull Barony. This was before I joined up with them in real life. I guess I was just sleeping in the sleigh or something. <laughs> And I think they ran into some Orogs, but nothing too, too crazy. Then they get into Hoganmark. We came across like some shrines, which were like weird because they were like for travelers. So there was snow all around, but on the inside it was like a nice spring day, which was pretty cool. So we spend the night there. The apparition appears again for Valkyrie and is like, hey, listen, there's this really interesting metal called Blood Silver. I had a sword that was really cool made out of this. He probably didn't use those words. Uh, it's been taken. You need to face your doom and kind of avenge me, etc. And the interesting thing about blood silver is if you have blood points and you get stabbed with blood silver, like that's it. Like your entire legacy is gone. The next day we continue on. We come across a giant, doesn't pose too much of a threat for us. We also come across a druid. We chat with him for a bit, see if he wants to come along with us. He's like, no, no, it's cool. And then we come across a camp. And this camp is an absolute chaos. Orogs from the Blood Skull Barony have just come in and they're about to attack this camp. And we're like, hey, we're here. We can totally help you. So like Yon gets up on a rooftop. Wizard stays way the heck back because come on. And then we just kind of start to go to war. It's a little touch and go, but we do manage to take everyone out and then there's this one goblin that's still alive and he's trying to crawl away. So we, you know, stop him and be like, hey, how you doing? Can we, can we chat with you? And so he tells us that the Blood Skull Barony is after this very special blade. Ding, ding, ding. And that is why they have invaded Hoganmark. They need to find this blade. So we're like, crap, we don't ha really have time to heal or rest or anything. We need to go right now and we need to go try to find this blade to avenge this ghosts that Valkyrie's seeing and also to stop the blood skull barony from getting their hands on it because that just that wouldn't be a good thing. So one of the guys from the camp that we just helped save, I think his name was Gunner, points us in the direction of this burial mound area. Says, you know, this is very sacred, hollowed land, nobody goes there. That's probably where you need to go. <laughs> so it's about seven hours north. We head up there and when we get up there there's this huge mound in the middle and then I think like eight mounds in a circle around it. These seem very much like Barrow Downs, and after reading Lord of the Rings, I know that you just shouldn't. You just shouldn't. So as soon as we get close enough, this hand reaches out from the middle Barrow, and this guy comes out, and then from all the other ones, these skeletons pop out. And this was a really tough fight. We managed to kill him first, which made a difference, because then all the other skeletons stopped, but like we were all hurting, we were all pretty dead, and we're like, okay, I guess we need to go get the sword. Well, before we even have a chance to get a sword, like behind us, people from the Blood Skull Barony show up. And there's like hundreds of them. We're gonna die. That's it. This is the end of it. My thoughts are basically like, how can I save myself? <laughs> and I think everybody kind of had that same thought. Jan specifically, because he just runs straight ahead, grabs the sword and runs into the mound, like the, the bigger mound, like figures he can get in there and hide a little bit. Well, once he grabs the sword, the spirit of the guy that has been talking to Val shows up. His name's Nialgrim and he is like, thank you so much for coming here. Can I have my sword? And Jan is like, yeah, go ahead, take it. And then he just goes ape and killing all these Orogs. Valkyrie has this cool horde breaker ability. So she and him, her ancestor, are just fighting like crazy. And soon enough, they're all dead and we all survived. It could have been really bad, but you know, Nialgrim saved our butts and he was like, hey, can I take this sword? And we're like, yes, please, because none of us want to get stabbed with this sword. And so he takes the sword off and says he's gonna get Eric to destroy it. And then he just disappears, he's avenged, his legacy is probably fixed, all, all is well. And then we go into his tomb and we find so much money, it's, it's great. So much money. So after we kind of lick our wounds, even though you know we did win, we head back to the camp where we just were, we let them know, hey, like this area up here now, it's cool, you don't have to worry about not going there anymore, we've broken the curse, also like we got rid of all these orogs, like you're good, you're good. And so they're obviously very thankful and they send a raven off to the queen of Hoganmark 
And then we just kind of carry on our way. We heal a little bit and then we're like, let's go to this bigger town so we can trade some of the trinkets that we got in the tomb. And also if there's anything we want to do, it makes more sense to do it in a town versus a camp. When we get into the bigger town, Roz goes into the apothecary and he meets this dwarf called Tordic. They talk a little bit about spells, kind of trade things back and forth. And Tordic's like, listen, I have this really cool spell. It's called a right spell. Asterix here, I don't remember if I mentioned it before, but our DM made up these right spells, which are spells that take an entire week to cast. So there are things that you can do on your downtime week. So he has been researching this one. He hasn't been able to figure out how to finish it. So he lets me have all his notes. I'm pretty sure I paid him for them. And I told him that, you know, if I figure it out, I will let him know what I figured out. And so I finished this spell and this spell is called commutation. And basically it allows the caster to transport the party 25 miles for every level the wizard is. So, that's pretty cool because at level 5 I can transport us 125 miles, which ain't bad. It's it's a good use of a week. While we're going about the town for this week, a raven shows up, I'm assuming to the Jarl here or whatever their equivalent is, and it's from Vikinger, it's from the Queen, and it says, hey, I'm requesting your presence, if you don't mind. And with that, that is the end of that session. It was a little quick. I always find it's a little faster when there's a ton of battles involved, because I don't like do play-by-play -play on the battles. But we're like all the way in Hogenmark, which was quite a ways away from home. We're trying to figure out how to get home, but we're gonna go to Vikinger, because the queen invited us, so we should definitely go. Also, we have our queen, so I don't know what we're gonna do about that. Like, do you tell her, by the way, I'm the queen over there, or what? Anyway, with that, this is where I'm going to end this episode. If you enjoyed it, make sure you hit that like button and also subscribe so you will know when I post next. And with that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.